Hey Wargamers, welcome back again. We've got another mech review. This time, the Locust 1M. You wanted light mechs, now you got it. This is about as lightly armored as they come. Uh, this one, a recommendation from our friend and subscriber, Alex Kara. So Alex, thanks for this. Uh, I'll be honest, I was a little reluctant to do a review on this design because it's, again, paper-thin armor, only one ton on this mech, uh, packs a pair of LRM-5s and a medium laser. Uh, but it was a pretty interesting design, and some of the numbers that came out of the Battleytics engine, some of those charts and graphs, uh, really inform how I think you can most effectively play this mech. So you might get some pretty interesting tidbits. Uh, and this is a low cost. This is, a, this is another basement bargain blowout type mech. I think battle value is like 454. Um, so pretty interesting to see how it stacks up. So stay tuned. I got all those numbers coming your way right now. All right, guys, so you wanted light mechs. You got it. So here it is, the LCT-1M Locust. This is a 20-ton inner sphere design up uh, at the battle value 424 now this is uh, a cult classic here the locust has been around forever uh, it's been in almost every box set it's in a ton of different lance packs from back in the day um, i've got a couple of the original metal ones um, just love this design uh, and even love the new redesign in the game of armored combat even more just really neat looking um, so some history on this mech it was built in 2571, that's Star League error, uh, and it persisted all the way uh, until about the middle of the clan invasion when it sort of went extinct, this particular uh, missile variant of the Locust. Now, uh, I don't know if there was a production shortage or if it was just refitted with better tech or if there were some better choices out there. Like, I know the Raptor pops up, I think, in 3050, 3058 maybe, um, and the... Um, you know, there's the Owens as well, so there's some of these new, like, Omni-type variants that are light, fast, missile-bearing mechs um, that may have just replaced it. But regardless, I digress. Um, what do we love about the Locust? Well, we all love its ground speed, 812. Um, this thing can claim a plus 4 all day long. Um, it can turn twice, it can go uphill two levels and still claim a plus 4. Uh, just phenomenal in that regard. Um, it has 10 heat sinks, standard equipment, and uh, a massive 1 ton of armor. Uh, this thing has literally just 16 points, uh, so not a whole lot going on there. And if we look at the, um, the center diagram there, you can see, I mean, this thing's like woefully under-armored. I mean, the head has more armor than the, uh, than the arms and legs, so that's, that's disturbing. If I was driving this thing around a battlefield, I would be, I would be disturbed. I'd be concerned, to say the least. Uh, especially when you're carrying a ton of ammunition in your center torso. Um, so it's got, it's got that. That's feeding twin LRM-5 launchers mounted, one in each arm, uh, and it has a, a medium laser uh, as well in the, uh, in the CT. All right, so on to the offensive benchmarks for the Locust 1M. Uh, so not a whole lot to say here um, in terms of the red line and the optimized damage. All of these things are the same as baseline. This mech has no ability uh, to build up any heat. So this is reminiscent of the Assassin, except the Assassin could jump and build up some heat. This guy, uh, this guy can't even jump. So literally you can run around at full speed, hold the trigger down, uh, spray missiles everywhere, and, and you'll never build up any heat. Um, but what's great about this mech, uh, in my opinion, is its ability to deliver uh, substantial damage for a 20-ton mech. I mean, two LRM-5 salvos at you know, basically 21 inches, right? As soon as you get into range, as soon as the combat begins um, and, and the missiles start flying, this guy's right in there. Um, so pretty good in that regard. And the baseline, optimized red line, however you want to state it, the damage, 62.3. So this is a little bit more than what we saw in the Assassin, believe it or not. Um, and that's just because it's bringing so much more to bear um, at, that, at that range. Now, in terms of the lethality index, um, basically how this shook out was it killed the Javelin 4.3% of the time. So clearly not a stone cold killer, does not really have the, uh, the firepower to bring to bear, uh, to bring this mech down quickly enough, um, but it had pretty decent damage per hit. So it was at 4.24 damage per hit. And again, that's because it's got the medium laser, but also uh, the variable LRM-5 salvos coming in. So, you know, the, the, that damage could fluctuate up or down, but um, on average, you know, it's, it's doing pretty good, 4.2 damage. 
Uh, it generated 1.5 critical hits per game on average, uh, and the time to kill was 28.8, so not great. Um, but again, in this scenario, that javelin is 10 tons heavier, you know, or 150% bigger than the locust. Um, so, you know, at, at the end of the day, is that really terrible? I don't, I don't think so. Um, so these numbers, you, know, you got to kind of take them with, um, uh, with, the, with the context here. Um, and overall, I mean, I, don't, I was, I was impressed that it was even able to do this kind of damage. Um, so, you know, we know it's got a ton of, of armor. I, I'm afraid to flip the screen and look at the defensive benchmarks. Um, but I, th I think the story here uh, is that if left unchecked, this locust for, you know, 424 points can do some damage, right? Uh, and that's, that's pretty good. So let's check out that defensive side. Hold your breath. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, I th this one I think may be, uh, so far, the, the most destructible mech that we have reviewed. Uh, so let's start with the mobility. So we talked about this earlier, right? Uh, even up to a minus two penalty, it can still claim um, a plus four target mod, which is pretty great. Um, however, mode of hits, 41% of the time, it's all mode of hit. Why? Well, it's got like no armor on its legs. I mean, I'm pretty sure you can blow it off with like a medium laser in one shot. Um, so, you know, struggles in that regard. Um, and if we look at the survivability and the destructibility, so uh, it was killed 95 0.6% of the time with a CT or head kill. It was killed 2.3% of the time from an ammo kill. Um, so for a total of 97.9% destroyed. Um, it only survived 2.1% of the time. That's hilariously low. Um, so what does that tell us? Well, you know, the ammo hits are so low for a couple of reasons. One, that ammo is stuffed away in its center torso. So there's a one in 36 chance that you're going to hit that ammo. Um, you know, you've basically got, uh, I'm sorry, a 1 in 12 chance of hitting that ammo. Um, you know, that's basically, um, you know, how that's, that's tucked away uh, in there. But, I mean, I don't even think there's enough armor and internal structure combined to, like, even generate crits unless you're just pinging it with, you know, LBX buckshot or small lasers or something incredibly small. Any, you know, AC-10 or type weapon, any, any big caliber weapon is just going to rip that thing apart uh, in basically a single hit. So um, we look at the cumulative survivability, and you can see basically as soon as the awesome gets into 12 inches, which is medium range, and it can start to even hit the thing, uh, its survivability begins to tank, uh, and the kills just skyrocket. So what's the moral? The moral is keep this thing at range. Pretend the medium laser doesn't exist. In fact, if you're going to mod it, I would drop the medium laser, add another ton of armor, uh, and just run around and spray missiles and hope to God nobody shoots you. Um, because this thing, basically, if you sneeze on it, uh, it's just going to crumple. Now, because this mech had such, um, such bad survivability, it really hampers its uh, efficiency score um, overall and, and just the general effectiveness of the mech. Um, because in the benchmark, again, you're forcing range closure there. Um, we're just keeping it flat uh, for every mech that we test. I, I think that, you know, this is a mech you'd want to keep at range. But again, um, you know, the benchmark, uh, the benchmark says otherwise. Sometimes you may not be able to keep it at range due to mission parameters or uh, a well-laid trap. But um, this mech, once you get in close, it just, again, just disintegrates. So you can see there's severe separation um, from its optimized average calculated damage, which was pretty good at 62.3 for a 20-ton mech, uh, and it just goes all the way down to 24.4, uh, which is almost like a, uh, I want to say a 66% loss, um, you know, from the optimized to the effective. So that's, that's pretty bad. Um, and the survival rate basically, I mean, the mech basically flatlines by turn 10. Um, I, I mean, it's almost dead, you know, uh, again, uh, I think 97 was at 97.9% it, it died. So that's that's pretty rough. Um, so that affected its efficiency score. And the efficiency score ended up being 4.1 um, on the dial there. So that again, that's a little bit uh, a little bit worse than average. The average is about a five. Um, so it's still in kind of the meat of the bell curve there. Um, a little bit better than the Assassin uh, overall. Um, so still a solid choice if you're looking for a cheap mech. Um, but, um, you know, definitely some better bang for buck out there. Um, but not a bad choice if you're looking to round out your force with a, with a cheap buy. Um, now, one other thing that surprised me here was the gunnery score sensitivity. So um, this mech, very, very responsive. 
uh, to an uptick in gunnery. And I think there's a few reasons for that. One, it's doing all of its damage um, at long range, and, and that's because it's dead when it's in close, uh, when it gets to those closer turns, um, and then also because it's so cheap, when you increase that damage um, at, at longer range, you know, you're just getting a huge return on investment because now we talked about this in some of the other cheaper mechs, you know, 120% of uh, 424 is, is it's not it's not a whole lot at all, right? Um, you're looking like an uptick of 80 BV um, to move it from, you know, gunnery four to gunnery three um, and 160 BV to move it from gunnery four to gunnery two. So not, um, not a, a whole lot of... Um, of reason not to play this guy with a little bit of a better pilot, especially considering um, you need to keep this thing at range. So, you know, if you put a decent pilot in there and he can lay some hurt in, uh, you know, you can get a couple of benefits. One, you're actually gonna do some damage, and two, it may draw some fire. Um, and again, if you keep the speed up, you know, that could that could be beneficial and, and help out the rest of the land. So, moral of the story on this, I would definitely play this guy at least at a gunnery two. Um, as like a veteran or an elite pilot. Um, gunnery 3 at a bare minimum. Do not put a Gunnery 4 pilot in this particular variant um, because it's almost going to be useless. Um, just a total waste of points in my opinion because you're not going to be able to hit, you know, again, long range plus 4, Gunnery 4, you're already looking at an 8 if you stand still. And if you stand still, this mech is toast. So um, let's go on to rolls. Let's check out what we would do there. Okay, so on the roll analysis here, let's just recap a couple of the key metrics that we pulled out of this Battleitics analysis. So our optimized ACD, 62.3. Again, that was pretty good. We're talking about a 20 ton mech here. Um, it's, it's not a bad amount of damage to dole out over 12 turns. Uh, damage per hit was 4.24, so again, not terrible there. Uh, survival rate was 2.1%. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's like, that's like just a little bit better than immediately explodes when coming off the dropship. So <laughs> not much to say there. Uh, movement rate was pretty good at 812, right? I mean, there's not much faster in this particular Succession Wars era um, than the Locust. Uh, our red line heat was zero. I mean, this thing basically can run and fire everything all day, never build up any heat, so that's great. Um, efficiency, 4.1. So for a 424 battle value mech, it's not bad. Um, again, it's a little bit below average. Um, you know, you, you want to target around a five for your bang for buck, but considering how, uh, how cheap this thing is, that's not terrible. Um, and then the gunnery sensitivity, again, 0 0.640. So this thing a little more sensitive than I expected. Um, so reinforcing that, putting a gunnery two, gunnery three pilot um, in this. And again, if it were me, gunnery two all day for the, you know, for the extra, extra cost, um, that's, that's what I would do. So how does that shake out? Well, offensively, it scored a 2 out of 5. Defensively, a 0.5 out of 5. So again, I think this one uh, takes the cake for, for all-time low there. Uh, mobility was a 4.5 out of 5, so very good. Control, 5 out of 5. And then efficiency, 2.5 out of 5. So again, just a little bit below average there. So when we look at the threat assessment for this mech, where does this mech really, um, really shine? So... Uh, it's in that 14 to 10 inch range. That's when your LRMs are at medium range. That's where you're going to see the most bang for buck. Um, you know, you're only going to be looking at a plus two mod for the range. Um, and then, you know, assuming you're running, which you should be, uh, you're at a four. And then, you know, depending on the, the target mod and, you know, again, your gunnery, you know, you're maybe in the six to eight range to hit. Um, so not too bad. And, and, you know, going after bigger, slower targets might be a little bit better. You can keep the mech a little bit further out. You know, at longer ranges, again, your chance to hit goes down. That plus two to plus four uh, from medium to long is, is severe. Um, it's, a, it's a really rough jump. So and you can see the drop there um, in the threat um, because of that when you, when you start backing out to 15 inches and beyond. But even still keeping the mech at long range early in the game just to try to um, keep this mech alive. I think is good. Now you will see the efficiency, um, I'm sorry, the threat ratio uh, go up around seven, six inches, um, but don't be fooled. That's only because, you know, those LRMs are basically at optimum range and you can bring that medium laser in and it's free heat, right? I mean, there, there's no heat build on this mech. So it looks real good. Um, but remember back to the efficiency analysis where we saw that this mech just cannot survive in close. If you feel confident that this mech has the right cover, um, or the, you know, the opposing team has really, really bad 
gunners and you're not going to be able to get that they're not going to be able to get those hits and you can keep your speed mod up i mean good luck um i mean it's probably worth it to bring that medium laser into play towards the end of the game um but you know for the most part i would definitely keep this mech you know at that you know probably honestly 11 to 14 inches i would keep it out of 10 um, because 10 is where you're going to see opposing mechs get a medium range benefit for large lasers ac 10s and so forth so I would say 11, 11 to 14 is where, you know, you're optimally going to want to play this mech. All right, so the threat envelope. Um, this mech is, is interesting because um, this mech can arm flip. So you basically have 360 degree arc of fire um, between those two, um, those two LRM5s, right? So um, obviously when you're looking at the rear left and the rear right, um, you're only going to be able to fire one or the other, but straight back you could actually fire both. So you can run this thing away and fire, um, you know, you can do all sorts of neat things. And that's important to remember to keep the speed mod up. Um, so just an important point of note there. Now, um, and, and if you're not familiar, right, arm flipping, if you only have upper arm actuators and shoulder actuators, so it means no lower, no hand actuator, you can basically spin your arms around um, and shoot behind you, which is pretty cool. So pretty neat. Anyway, uh, moving forward. So let's talk about combat roles. So as I mentioned in the assassin review, you guys have been real good about sort of, um, challenging, uh, you know, what, what I've been coming up with and I, and I love it because, you know, everyone's got a sort of different perspective on these things. Um, so this mech, again, really interested in your feedback here. I, I picked three roles here. So the first one is fire support. Clearly, I mean, keep the mech in the backfield, keep it mobile, and just rein in those LRMs. That medium laser is like a last-ditch weapon, in my opinion. Um, I would just keep that mech raining in those LRMs. You're going to get 12 sustained turns of fire, which is pretty good. Um, the second thing is a skirmisher. So you can kind of keep it on the flank. You can move it around. Again, keeping it in that optimum, you know, 14 to 11-inch range. If you have the opportunity, dip into 9 or eight or even seven to get those LRMs in short, get that medium laser in play um, and then get out the next turn. Um, so, you know, playing that skirmisher role, it can do that. It doesn't do a ton of damage in terms of like, you know, big hit weapons and things like that, but it could be an annoyance to the, to the point where, you know, people are gonna wanna peel off and try to chase you down, in which case you flip those arms and run the other direction. Um, and then of course a recon mech, right? So, you know, getting in, securing objectives, hitting objectives, um, you know, anything along those lines. Anytime there's like objectives involved, this mech has the ground speed to do it. I would almost caution though, um, and I struggled whether or not I should select this as a role. I would caution because it has such light armor, it can't be a defended objective. It needs to be the kind of thing where, you know, there's multiple objectives or you need to control a section of the board and this mech wants to get there first and can get there, you know, fire uh, and hold that area down until, you know, your, your, uh, your lance actually catches up to it. Um, you know, again, that speed is just something that's beneficial, but, um, I think its primary roles are fire support and skirmisher. So anyway, so that's the Locust guys, uh, Locust 1M. So thanks again for this recommendation. Uh, this was a good one. Uh, I had, I actually was again, reluctant to, to, you know, really want to review this mech because it's had such light armor. Um, but now I kind of want to give it a try um, on the table and, and see, you know, actually how, how this mech does, because it's not one that I played. I know Kevin's played it uh, once or twice, but um, I'm now I'm kind of interested to give this one a go. So thanks again for watching. Definitely interested in your comments, uh, your feedback. Uh, and of course, if you haven't, please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned because we've got a lot more coming from Death From Above Wargaming. Take care, guys.